Hello everyone, and welcome to this demonstration of how to create a peer using the IBM Blockchain Platform Console. I'll be following the process from the IBM Blockchain Platform documentation, which you can see here. At the end of this tutorial, you will have created this structure, representing the components related to Org1. In our next video, we'll create an ordering service, and after that, a channel, to complete the infrastructure of our network. In this video, we'll be using recommended values for the various fields in the UI. These are the same values that you'll find in the docs, which are cataloged in tables from the various tasks. These values are not mandatory, but if you're using the console for the first time, we do recommend them. In cases where you have to re-enter a value, for example, an enroll ID in secret, as you'll see, which are not stored in the console, you'll be able to refer to the tables in the documentation to remember what you entered. All right, so let's get started creating that peer. If you're unfamiliar with Hyperledger Fabric, which the IBM blockchain platform is based on, you might not realize that you have to create a certificate authority before you create a peer. This is because before we can create a peer, we have to create some identities. These identities allow a network entity, whether it's an admin or a node, to sign its actions using a certificate. Those certificates are issued by a certificate authority, also known as a CA. Therefore, our first step in creating a peer is to create a CA and use it to register identities for the peer admin and for the peer itself after which we'll need to create a definition for org1. To do that, click on Add Certificate Authority. We're going to be creating a CA here, not importing one. Then give the CA a display name. Because it's going to be associated with org1, we'll call it org1CA. Next, we'll give an owner role ID and secret for the user who will be the admin of the CA itself, admin and admin PW. Note the resource allocation box. If you leave this box unchecked, your CA will be deployed with default resources. If you want to know what these resources are, for example, to check against the resources available in your cluster, click the box and then Next. If you're comfortable with the default allocation, click Next. You'll be taken to the summary screen which will show the values for the CA you are creating. If these seem right to you, click Add Certificate Authority. The process of deploying a CA can take a few minutes. To check on the status of your deployments, make sure to refer to your Kubernetes dashboard. If the box on a node does not turn green or turns gray at some point, you can check on its status by making sure you're in the correct resource group and clicking on your deployments. The Kubernetes dashboard is also how you will extend resources in your cluster as needed. When the CA is ready, you'll see the gray box turn green, indicating that the CA has been deployed. But before we can use the CA to register identities for Org1, we need to enroll an admin for the CA, which we can do by clicking on the CA and then clicking on Associate Identity. From there, enter the enroll ID and secret you used when creating the CA, admin and admin PW. Then give this identity the name Org1CA Admin. Then click Associate Identity. If you click over to your wallet, you can see that the CA admin is there, indicating it has been enrolled successfully. The CA is now ready to be used to register and enroll identities. We'll start by registering the admin of Org1. Because it will be an admin, use an enroll ID of Org1 admin and a secret of Org1 admin PW. Then give it the type admin. Do not use the peer or orderer type. And ignore the enrollments and attributes. If you want to learn more about enrollments and attributes, you can read about them in our documentation. Now that the admin identity of Org1 has been registered, we need to register the identity for the peer itself. Remember that nodes have identities just as admins and users do. So we'll use peer1 and peer1pw as the enroll ID and secret of the peer. This is a peer, so we need to use the peer type and ignoring an enrollments and attributes. So now that we have registered the two identities, we can create the definition of org1, which is represented by an MSP. We do that through the Organizations tab. Click Create. We'll use an MSP display name of Org1 MSP and an MSP ID of Org1 MSP. Then specify Org1 CA. You'll see some values in the fields below. They're the enroll ID and secret you entered when you created the admin of the CA. You don't want to use them as the admin of the Org1 as well. You want to create separate identities for the admins of your components. In this case, that means using the identity you registered to be the admin of Org1, Org1 admin, and Org1 admin PW and giving this identity the name org1mspadmin. Then click Generate. This will enroll the identity and put it in your wallet. Then export it. A JSON representing the org1admin will be downloaded to your system. 
Make sure you always export your identities and MSPs as they're only stored in the browser. If you switch to a different browser or a different machine, you won't be able to operate your components without uploading the admin of that component. When that is done, we can create this MSP definition, after which we check our wallet and can see that the org1 admin is there. Now we can create the peer. Let's give this peer a display name of peer org1. Again, this is a display name for the UI. You'll see some advanced deployment options here, including the option to select a state database type and the option to use certificates from an external CA. Note that by default, CouchDB will be selected. If you do not check any of the boxes below, default values for the various options will remain selected. To inspect these values, for example, the default resources that will be allocated to the peer, click the resource allocation box. You will also have a chance to review these values on the summary screen. But since we're going to be going through this tutorial for the first time, you could ignore these options and click Next. Then make sure Org1CA is selected. Now we want to use the peer identity that we registered, Peer1 and Peer1PW. Then select Org1MSP, as this peer will be associated with Org1. You could ignore this CSR host name for now. It's only if you want to use a specific domain name for your peer. Next, select which fabric version image you want to use to deploy this peer. I will select the highest version available here. Keep in mind that 2.x peers will have a lower resource allocation than 1.4.x peers because starting in Fabric version 2, smart contracts are deployed into their own pods by the smart contract launcher. Because Fabric v 2.x peers do not have a shim, the external dependencies that allowed smart contracts to run in earlier versions of Fabric, you will have to vendor the shim and then repackage any smart contracts written in Golang, also known as Go, that you installed on peers deployed using a Fabric v 1.4.x image. Without this vendoring and repackaging, the Go smart contract will not run on a peer using a Fabric v 2.x image. You will not need to do this for smart contracts written in Java or Node.js, nor for smart contracts written and packaged using the 2.0 package. Note also that you will not be able to enable any v2 capabilities on any channels for the time being. Then associate an identity. This defines who the admin of the peer will be. In this case, we're going to be using the same admin for the org as for the peer, org1 MSP admin. While you can create a separate admin for the peer, it's perfectly fine to use the same identity that's the admin of your organization. On the next panel, review the summary to make sure these values are what you expect. Because we chose not to customize our resource allocation, pay particular attention to this section, as it represents the total amount of resources needed for this deployment. If you want to take a closer look at these values, go back and click on the resource allocation box. A panel will come up showing these resources and the containers they are linked to. You can see the resources I have available in my cluster, which has three nodes with four CPUs and 16 gigs of RAM in a single zone. Based on the resources set to be allocated for my peer, I have enough space. When you are ready, click Add Peer on the summary screen. It can take several minutes to create a peer. Check your Kubernetes cluster to monitor the status of your deployment. When the peer has finished deploying, you'll see the gray box turn green. All right, so the peer has been created, and that's all there is to it. We created a CA. We created an identity for the peer and for the admin. Then we created the definition of org1 and used all of that information to create the peer. And now that we have a peer, we have everything we need to join a channel or a network. If you want to host a channel, check out our next video which will show you how to create an ordering service. So thank you for watching this demonstration, and happy blockchaining.